Okay, finally a problem. This is, uh, what we're going to calculate here is the potential at a point P due to uh, this uniformly polarized sphere. So the green vector arrows here underneath a lot of the, um, the, the axis and, and the other notation here, that's the polarization. All right, and the polarization in this problem is just, it's, uh, it's constant and it's in the Z direction. The strength of that polarization we're just going to call uh, magnitude capital P. Um, remember, the potential is just the um, contribution. It's the, basically the it's as if we have a surface charge. Because this thing is polarized, we have a bunch of positive charges, if you remember up here, a bunch of negative charges down here. And so the, the potential is, is really due to those surface charges plus any kind of bound uh, charge density inside. And we said last time that the bound charge density is zero. Well, let's let's do that mathematically, but let's look at the picture in a little more detail. All right, so what I have set up here, there's a, a little more different colors than last time. Look, we need to, if we want to find the um, contribution due to the charge that's on the surface, so if we want to find the potential at point P due to the, all the bound charge on the surface of this sphere, um, we really need to find script R. And so I think even though we're not going to use a vector, I still think it's nice to set up how we did in Coulomb's Law. From my origin to my point P, that's R. Um, we can call that uh, ZZ hat if we want. If we really need the vector, that's ZZ hat. All right, to there. Um, from the origin to the charge, the little charge element DA, it's charge element DA, that's going to be R prime. All right, note that I, it's set up so the reason why we put the point P here is so we can actually use the polar angle theta prime, and then R is just going to be from dA to the point P. That would take care of this integral here. We also really should set up the same thing for this integral as well. I should draw from the origin to a volume element, and that would be R prime. So we're just going to do this all over again. And then I need to, I already have my uh, um, blue vector there to the point, and then there'd be another, this kind of orange color, there'd, our script for this one would be this way. All right, and then I'd integrate the volume uh, and over the, the bound charge density uh, to find out the contribution from the volume integral. So you're doing a surface integral and a volume integral for any distribution. Um, let's real quickly look at what sigma b and, and rho b are for this particular constant uh, constant polarization. Um, I don't think Griffiths does it really. Griffiths has a uniformly charged sphere and he cheats. He uses a special method um, and he, I, I don't think he does a very good job um, showing you this example. So I'd like to show you a way that I think follows what he sets up in the section before, what we've set up in the screencast, and hopefully um, can give you some intuition and understanding on how to do a problem like this. So let's start by finding the bound uh, surface charge and the bound volume charge densities. Sigma b, sigma b is just equal to the polarization dot the normal to the surface. So basically what sigma b is, it's saying whatever the um, contribution normal to the surface of the polarization, that's what sigma b is. That's just going to be equal in this case to p z hat dot, the normal to the surface in this case, it's a sphere, that's our charge distribution, sphere, or I really should say dipole distribution, r hat, that's going to be equal to Let's put the magnitude first. Magnitude P. Cos theta prime. And let's box that. All right, not too bad. The volume charge density is just going to be minus del dot P. And as we can see, this is a constant. Uh, it's the polarization is written in Cartesian components, and it's constant. So for us, this is just going to be zero. And we saw that in the picture on the previous screencast. You can think of what's happening on the inside. There's a. Um, we know that. Let me. Maybe I can use another color here. Um, should we use yet another color? Let's get. Some, let's get even another color here. Let's do this, a uh, uh, kind of a purpley color here. We, uh, um, we know that there are um, negative charges down here. 
and there are positive charges up here and that if I take any line here it's just alternating in between plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus and so on this picture is getting a little crowded but if you remember last time this is just a row of alternating plus minus plus minus and it happens in every row here so that if we take any patch here the sum of those charges is going to be zero all right the sum of that if I take a, a a volume patch here the sum of the charge is going to be zero and therefore the the bound charge density is zero Okay, so uh, that allows us to do one nice thing here. We can just scratch out. We don't have to do this volume integral. And so all we're left with is the, uh, the surface integral um, using this bound charge density. Let's uh, calculate that integral on the next screen. Okay, so what the problem boils down to, uh, once we have the bound surface charge and the bound charge density, we really just need to find script R. Um, I think uh, Griffiths doesn't also do a good job about uh, drawing the diagram like he uh, he did before with uh, uh, straight Coulomb's law. It's just the same diagram. We're interested in point P, and then our script is from uh, whatever we're integrating to the point in question. So our script, the length, just using the law of cosines, is going to be, and I'm assuming that the sphere has a radius a squared, and that I'm at a point z uh, on the z-axis above the sphere. I'm going to have z squared plus a squared minus 2z a cos theta prime. Okay, and so the integral that I want to solve just going to be 1 over 4 pi e naught. I could take the, actually I could take the polarization out since it's constant. And then that is going to be uh, the integral over cos theta prime a squared sine theta d theta d phi. So you can just squeeze that in there all over r c squared plus a squared minus 2 z a cos theta prime uh, that's it rather than do this nasty integral you actually find that Wolfram Alpha and Sage will chug on this really hard this is a hard one um, this can be looked up in an integral table even though nobody does that anymore uh, if you're interested, I can actually give you what the integral is. I'm going to give you the result, and we'll talk about the result just a little bit. Okay, so here's the result from the integration. The potential goes like a 1 over z squared. If you are outside of the sphere and inside the sphere, uh, it goes linear. So if we take the gradient of that, if we want to actually look at the field, and remember we're uh, at some point P along the z-axis, and we can be outside, and then what happens when we move it inside? Well, if we're outside, it goes like z cubed. That's just what we would expect for, for a, a dipole. Uh, and then on the inside, it is constant and it's uniform. So check it out, the E field, and this makes sense. The E field is opposite to the polarization inside. All right, again, if I put a positive uh, uh, test charge here, remember we had positive bound charge here and negative bound charge here, it would want to go this way. All right. Here is the uh, um, here's what this E field looks like. The E field for inside and outside. It actually looks like a pure dipole. Um, this sphere. Um, if I again, this is like the analogy to what is the electric field outside a charged sphere Q. Well, it's just going to look like a point charge. Well, this just looks like a big point dipole. All right. And if you look on Griffiths, it's equation 3.104. Here's the generic coordinate free form of the electric field of a uh, of a pure dipole down here. And uh, in our case, though, we were along the z-axis uh, in order to make uh, all the work easy. But we can change uh, z to r and r hat to z hat. And when we when we plug that, uh, um, when we change uh, the vectors here to uh, our r hats, our r hats to z hats here, and our r's to z's, uh, we get the um, we get the same thing. All right. So this matches with this. Note, I'm also using the relation that p total is just the sum of all of that dipole density integrated over the volume. It's a sphere of radius a. 
so it's going to be 4 thirds pi a cubed. Um, it's a vector quantity though, so it's in the in the z hat direction. All right, so when you plug p total into this generic form, and now instead of uh, um, instead of r, I have uh, I have uh, um, that's actually a little mistake there. Let me fix that real quickly. There should be a hat here instead of r hat. Let's see if we can erase that a little better. Now well, that one won't come off. This is supposed to be an r hat here. All right, instead of r hat, I have z hat. And then we'll see that they're equivalent. So again, inside it's uniform, the E field's uniform, and it's opposite to the polarization, and outside the thing just looks like a point dipole.